I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking about an overview specifically of sequences. In problem number 23, we start out with um, a sequence, okay, and they give us some terms of this sequence. We have that the sequence is one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on. And we want to do three things here. First of all, we want to find the next two terms of that sequence. Then part B, we'd like to find a recurrence relation that generates the sequence. And then finally, we'd like to find an explicit formula for the nth term of the sequence. Okay, so let's do each of these things. Uh, let's start with part A. And in part A, I just want to say, so what would be the next two terms? So I've got one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth. Uh, I think we see the pattern each time I multiply this thing by a half. And so if I'm multiplying by a half every single time, the next guy would be 1 over 32. And then the next guy would be 1 over 64. Okay, so we see the pattern and we could generate some more guys. The next would be 1 over 128, right? Okay, so um, part B, we want to find a recurrence relation that generates the sequence. Okay, so what we need to have a recurrence relation for a sequence is we need to know what's the first guy and then how do I get to the next guy? Okay, I know what the first guy is. A sub 1 is just 1. So the first guy's 1. And then I want to tell you, and if you're at the nth guy, how do you get to the n plus first guy? Okay, so I know that if I'm at the first guy, the way that I get to the second guy is I multiply by 1 half. So the way that I'm going to write that is I'm going to say that A sub n plus 1, or the way I get to the next guy, is I multiply the one I'm at by a half. So the a sub 2 is a sub 1 times a half, and a sub 3 is a sub 2 times a half, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, and so this, these two pieces of information together is what I call my recurrence relation. All right. Uh, let's look at part C. In part C, we'd like to find an explicit formula for the nth term of the sequence. In other words, uh, how can I just write it in such a way that it gives me all the information at once? I don't have to do this repetitive process. So the way I look at it, that is, well, all of these guys are just powers of a half. And so I could say that A sub n is just equal to one half to some power. But what is the power? Well, I know that the first one, if n is one, I want this to be one. I don't want it to be a half. So putting n up here would be incorrect. Because putting n up here would say that a sub one should be a half but it's not, it's one. But if I put in minus one, now everything's fine. If I plug in one, I get uh, one half to the zero, which is one. If I plug in two, I get one half to the first, which is a half, and you'll see that I could generate anybody in the sequence with this closed form formula for a sub n. So this is my explicit formula this is my recurrence relation, and this is me just kind of gen, uh, showing that I know what I'm talking about when I talk about this sequence to begin with. <laughs> 